Hello, fellow Sublime Text fanatics. Odat Nerd here, and welcome to this developer preview on a new package that I'm working on called HyperHelp. Now, if you watched last week's video, you saw me showcasing the Snappy package, which allows you to view the Sublime Text API documentation and other documentation directly within Sublime. This package, HyperHelp, actually powers the Snappy package and provides the whole of the help system. Snappy itself is actually just a simple plugin that uses the HyperHelp system along with some help files to provide the actual help. And uh, before we dive into that, I'd just like to point out that I do live streams and you have probably seen, if you watch them, me using HyperHelp and actually working on HyperHelp itself in those streams. If you're not familiar with the streams, there's a link down in the video description below where you can uh, head over and view the archives, maybe tune in when a new one happens if you have sublime questions and you'd like to see them answered or you just want to watch some guy work on packages and stumble around while he's writing code. You can also subscribe to this channel and hit the bell notification icon if you want to know when new videos become available on this channel. And I do create videos uh, based on your questions. So if you have a question about a Sublime Text plugin question or just a Sublime Text question in general, leave that in the comments section below or hit me on Twitter at OdatNerd and we'll see what happens. But for right now, let's go ahead and dive on into the video showing everything you need to know about HyperHelp. <music> Now, if you watched the previous video on Snappy, then what you're going to see here might seem a little bit samey. And that's because what we were actually previewing last week, by and large, was HyperHelp itself. Snappy as a package is just a bundled copy of the official Sublime Text documentation in HyperHelp format with a simple plugin to provide context sensitivity. The bulk of the work is done by HyperHelp itself, which is, of course, the topic of this video. Now, HyperHelp is designed to be a dependency that any package author could use to provide help for their own particular package, including, as we saw in Snappy in the previous video, context-sensitive help. Now, HyperHelp is sort of a hybrid in that it is both a dependency and a package. In order to use it, your package or some other package needs to tell package control that it depends on the HyperHelp core. That will cause package control to make sure that that dependency is installed. And once a package that uses HyperHelp loads, the dependency will also ensure that the HyperHelp package is installed as well. The core dependency provides all of the functionality for navigating around in help and loading and everything that you see. It's just exposed publicly in the HyperHelp package. And when it gets installed, you see that being popped up as we saw in the Snappy video last week. When HyperHelp is installed, it adds a HyperHelp item under the Help menu, which provides all of the commands you can use to interact with HyperHelp itself. And of course, these are also available in the command palette if you're so interested. Perhaps the most interesting command here, if you're unfamiliar with HyperHelp and want to learn more about it, is Help on Help, which will use HyperHelp to display its own help to tell you how to navigate around within the help system and what keys are available. You can also browse all of the available help, which we'll cover in just a second. You can create a bookmark to any help topic that you are interested in and immediately go back to that topic at any point. You can also view the table of contents for the currently open help package, which provides a hierarchical topic layout designed by the package author to be the most logical way to work your way through that help. You can use the help index to list all of the available help topics. If you know what you want to look for, that's the easiest way to find it. And of course, as we saw in the previous video, you can navigate through the history of help in any particular help tab by moving forwards and backwards or jumping to any particular history item, which we will again see in just a moment. Keep in mind that the history is held in the help tab. So once you close the tab, you lose the history. If we come up here to Browse Available Help, we can see a list of all of the installed packages that currently have help. Now, HyperHelp ships with its own documentation that gives you all the information on how to interact with help, how its help syntax works, how its help index works, and how to integrate it with your package. So we're not going to go into that here. You can delve on in. 
Snappy is also installed. So as we can see, there are three help packages, one for the API documentation, one for build files, and one for color schemes. And because help is based on a package by package basis in HyperHelp, you can also add help to your user package if you want. Because your user package is just a regular package, and you could use this, for example, to keep reference information in a easily hyperlinked and searchable manner. I personally use it to keep a list of all of the available commands for use in key bindings, because that's not yet part of the official Sublime Text documentation. When you choose an item from the list, you get to see the table of contents for the help package that you have chosen to view. And as I said, this is hierarchical. So these items, these first three items, will open a particular help topic. This one has nine topics in it, and that will open up a sublist allowing you to choose any particular topic. I'm going to choose that one. From within a help file, you can use the symbol list to immediately jump to any heading in a file to find exactly the place that you are looking for if you so choose. And you can do that as many times as you want. Now keep in mind the history element as we were discussing keeps track of every time you follow a topic. So from here I can go back to the file I was previously in and then I can come back to here if I want to. And I could also open the table of contents again and jump over to the settings documentation to see what settings that I can use in this package. And again, go back to where I was previously. Using the H key will show you the history in a, in a quick panel, allowing you to easily find something, including, of course, the ability to use filtering to get back to any particular point. By using the B key, I can create a bookmark. I can choose to bookmark this file as a whole or the exact view that I'm looking at. I'm going to choose view here and uh, you can type your own name. I'm going to use the default here like so. And if we were to again go up to the help menu, we can see that we could use G to go to the open a particular bookmark. Keep in mind that the key bindings you see here in this menu item are only available while a help tab is open. They don't work globally. And here I can see the two help bookmarks that I have and I can choose one and go to it directly. Behind the scenes of this whole operation are a series of one or more help files that are essentially just text files with a very minimal markup, which is of course documented in the help documentation itself. Tying everything together is an index file in a JSON format that tells HyperHelp what help files exist within that package, what topics exist within each particular help uh, file, allowing it to automatically navigate to the appropriate place. There is also help in HyperHelp itself that tells you how to integrate it into your own package. The simple line of adding a dependency, adding these four lines of code, and authoring your help, and you're good to go. And speaking of help authoring, there is one more video in this particular series that we need to talk about, and that is a package that makes it easier to author your actual help files. And that is all we have for that. That went on a little longer than I intended it to, but there are a lot of features there. Of course, some of them are still, of course, under uh, active development. Now, if that's all whet your appetite, next week, as I mentioned, we will be showcasing one third and final package in this developer preview series, uh, which is HyperHelp Author, which is authoring tools to help you create your own help. And you could create help if you're a package author for your own help. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, of course, use HyperHelp Author to create help for your own reference use directly within Sublime, even if you're not a package author. And that video is going to be coming up next week. So until then, uh, this is Odatner telling you to have a Sublime day.